I've got some new N3 upgrades. We're gonna look at Direct Drive Plus Easier Extruder, an all-in-one at the rear electronics case. This is my trusty Ender 3 Pro. It's my second Ender 3 and I consider it a development machine. I like to try out all sorts of things on it and as such, I'm constantly working on it, which means pulling it apart and putting it back together. Because of that, I want it to be as convenient as possible as well as printing as well as possible. So with that in mind, I'm bringing you two mods this video that are gonna achieve just that. You might remember previously, I tested the Palette 2 and it worked great on my Prusa Mark 3, but not so good on the Ender 3. Previously, I converted it to direct drive for only $35, and I've been really happy with the way that kit has worked, although I have missed having an aftermarket extruder. Before I fitted that, I had an easier extruder, which I've really missed because it's so easy to load filament. Previously, I would have advised people to spend $35 on an extruder upgrade. Either they got the easier to keep the Bowden extruder, or they converted to direct drive for the same price. Now with this one tiny part that I've developed, you no longer have to choose. Let me be clear that my problems are not with the direct drive extruder kit. That's working great. And the reason it's so cheap is because it retains the factory extruder bolting straight onto the nicely machined metal part. My complaints are with this factory extruder, not anything to do with the direct drive kit. When loading filament with an easy R, it never gets caught. The filament goes straight through into the tube every time. On the factory Ender 3 extruder, however, it is possible for it to shoot out the side and miss the hole underneath. And when it doesn't do this, quite often it's just really difficult to line everything up. At first, I experimented with the idea of designing a replacement part for the factory extruder, doing away with all of the parts you see on black on the left, but I still couldn't get it to work reliably. Therefore, what I ended up with was this simple adapter bracket for the EZR. As you can see here, it bolts as a spacer in between the DDE3 and the EZR extruder. All of the clear acrylic pieces face backwards and we have easy access to the squeezing mechanism as well as the extruder wheel for manually moving the filament in and out. From the front, we can now see that the stepper motor sits just a little bit higher than before, but the upside of that is there's now a bigger gap to give yourself more options for cooling fan ducts and things like that. One thing I really liked was on Thingiverse, there was a clip-on adapter that works with the Palette 2. That adds on the necessary fitting, and this brought me some success with the Ender 3 finally. Although there's still some other issues that aren't to do with the Ender 3 that are stopping it from synchronizing perfectly, but more on that in a future video. So the obvious downside is now you have to spend $35 twice if you want to mimic the setup I have here. But honestly, it's the best setup I've had on the printer so far. I've got the convenience of great loading, an extruder wheel, and flexible specific performance of the EZR, but I've also got the short and easy to tune retraction, as well as a super neat install of the direct drive kit. Next up, the electronics. And when I previously made a video on how to convert an Ender 3 to an MKS Gen L, I came up with an electronics enclosure that worked not too bad. The main problem was to keep the USB port accessible on the new board, it had to be mounted on the underside of the machine. When I was making those guides comparing all the various stepper motor drivers, as well as other mods, I can't tell you how annoying it was to continually have to flip the printer upside down to access the electronics. I thought that there had to be a better way. So I put on my thinking cap and I've developed what I think is a far superior solution. The Ender 3 as standard has its electronics in the front left, either facing up for the standard model or down for the Ender 3 Pro. But why not the rear of the machine? I started with a basic sketch of my concept to have two panels that could fit on the Ender 3 bed for printing. On the left hand side there should be room for a Raspberry Pi and any other accessories and on the right hand side either the standard board or an aftermarket one. It took me around four iterations to perfect it so let me talk you through how it works. It's easy to forget that the Ender 3 is technically open source and that means on the Creality GitHub they have a full CAD model of the whole thing. The reason I needed this is because I have an Ender 3 Pro, but this model is of a standard Ender 3. One of the main structural differences affecting this part is this railing here. On a standard Ender 3, it's 20mm wide, whereas on a Pro, it's 40mm wide. 
This mod should be compatible with either printer, assuming like it's shown here, there's nothing underneath the railing. It shouldn't matter how wide it is. The mod consists of five parts, but you'll only need to print four depending on your configuration. You can also reprint the parts you need to later on if you end up upgrading your main board. All of the parts are also designed to fit on the Ender 3 bed and print easily without any support. Let's have a look at how the printed parts go together. We have our left hand side, which has a fan mounted in it and the space to mount a Raspberry Pi with access to the ethernet as well as the four USB ports. There's also mounting bosses for a buck converter and space to put two relays as well. For the right hand side, we have two options depending on which main board you're running. If you're using the stock main board, there's an option for that. that gives you access to the USB and SD card as well as mounting bosses for four TL smoothers to eliminate zebra stripes. If you've already upgraded, however, you're going to use the other design, and that is compatible with the MKS Gen L, as well as the SKR 1.3, which has the same physical dimensions. As you can see, there's access for the USB for the MKS, as well as the USB and SD card for the SKR. Whichever combo you go with, that goes together the same way. The two halves will snap together, it should be a very tight fit, and after everything is screwed in and aligned, it should act as one piece and be fairly rigid. An M3 bolt is used front and rear, and they can be quite long because the hole is continuous on the inside. The rear bolt has room to be inset, so therefore it won't fail on the frame. As you can see, the two parts bolted and snapped together is now quite strong. All of the electronics components are meant to be retained with M3 by 8mm bolts. All of the bosses have 3mm holes and they're designed that you cut the thread when you insert the bolts for the first time. I recommend that you start by mounting your main board. Now I've mounted my fan which does need longer M3 bolts as well as a buck converter and let me explain the thermal management. There's these slots on the underside of the right hand side, the air is designed to come in those, come across the heat sinks and then be blown out the bottom from the fan on the far left hand side. Even with the Pi and a relay installed, there's still room to put a much thicker fan if you want to increase the cooling. When you get to this stage, you're ready to install it in the printer. Pull all of your wiring looms from the front of the printer to the back and then move them to the side so they're clear and out of the way. After this, we're going to pull off the two plastic caps that cover the end of the 4040 extrusion. You can see that with the bed the whole way forward, we have complete access from above to either side of the rear of the machine. Unplug the wire stepper motor because that plug's going to get in the way and then offer up our new plastic parts and they slide into the lower of the extrusion slots. Double check nothing is caught and then it can slide the whole way to the back. We're now going to pull it out to start plugging everything back in. There's a little slot at the back for the LCD ribbon cable to run through. We're going to line it up with that, pull it through but not plug it in yet because it's going to get in the way at this stage. I'd recommend starting with the power cables, the heated bed and the hot end cables while you have access to the screw terminals. Double check your polarity to avoid disaster. Pull the bed back and then note the little slot on the right hand piece where the wiring for the heated bed enters. Plug in the thermistor and then bring around the cables and then take great care to secure them properly with the screw terminals on the main board. We can now one by one start plugging in all of the other cables into the main board. I started by plugging in the four stepper motors the Y axis being the only tricky one because you need to run it through this slot in the rear left hand piece underneath the bridge and then plug it in like the rest. Now's also a good time to plug in all of the end stops. You can see that now that the wiring doesn't have to reach the front of the machine there's actually a lot of excess and you can pull the whole lot out the back like this for easy access if you like. Go ahead and plug in your remaining wires to where you remove them in the first place. Although I didn't show it here, the standard board fits great with all of the wires reaching nicely. Links to this diagram with everything labelled from the factory main board, as well as this diagram with everything labelled for the MKS Gen L are in the description. You can start to slide in the whole assembly, and now's a good time to remember to plug in your LCD ribbon cable. The whole assembly should be free now to slide the whole way in. You can now spend a little bit of time tidying up and routing your wiring into place, making sure that there's clear airflow over the heat sinks for the stepper motor drivers and the MOSFETs. The two halves to the lid are fitted in much the same way. The upper part of the 4040 extrusion on the printer interfaces with the outside edge of the lid and you should find that with some persuasion all of your cables will be held out of the way nicely in the corner. 
there's a single hole that lines up with an M3 bolt to prevent the lid from sliding back open. The left hand side works exactly the same way, line it up with the extrusion and then very carefully slide it to the back. Once again, your power supply wires should be pushed into the corner where they'll be retained neatly. Once again, a single M3 bolt is used in the corner to stop anything from coming loose. Now you can reinstall your two extrusion caps to keep the machine looking neat. And if you haven't already, plug back in your wire stepper motor. One of the things I really like about this mod is that the cabling for the heated bed no longer snags on anything. And it's got a really nice shallow curve, which should make it have good longevity. The wiring that exits on the right, however, can be in danger of being hit by the leveling knobs. So here I cable tie them to the back of the stepper motor for the Z axis to keep them out of the way. After this cable tie is clipped, I would suggest that this cable management is much better than factory. On the front of the machine, we now have this bare extrusion, but I have a printed part in the Thingiverse link that you can bolt on to cover this over and get everything looking neat again. We've now got twice as much space at the front of the machine and at the rear everything is super neat with only one bolt needed per side to slide off the cover and make alterations to the electronics. Because the fan is on the underside and at the back, it's also much quieter now. Working on the electronics is now as easy as spinning around the machine and undoing one bolt either side to slide back the cover. And that's so much easier than flipping the machine upside down or even unbolting the three bolts from the original design when it was at the front left. Now obviously this is good for the factory board as well as the MKS Gen L, but what about the SKR 1.3? Well, as you can see, I've got my hands on one now, so you can expect a guide on that in future. Also the relays that I put inside, expect a video guide on that coming up in the near future as well. If you've got any questions or tips on how this can be improved, please leave them down below in the comments. The links to all the printable files are down there in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.